about the pink um, rubric that you just received in class. And that goes right along with the pink packet that should be in your Washington, D.C. Uh, folder. Does anybody have the Washington folder with them? O open up that folder and dig through. Uh, you're going to find a pink packet. There you go. It's got a picture of the Capitol on the front. That pink packet goes with this rubric. These two things go hand in hand. They go together. Like what a lot of what a string today to do. Okay. Um, so I'm going to be talking about this uh, in, in what the scrapbook is all about here. And would like for you to kind of follow along so that you're going to know what's expected of you. First things first, your scrapbook is due Tuesday, uh, December 4th. By all means, that should be in your planner, uh, but I would put it in your planner in a couple of different places because you can't wait until Monday night, December 3rd, uh, and expect to be successful in creating your scrapbook. Uh, so definitely uh, take a look at that and put it in a couple of different places in your planner between now and December 3rd. Uh, you're going to turn your scrapbook in to your first period teachers. Uh, and then we are going to kind of have a grading party. Uh, we're going to get together and uh, knock out the scrapbooks, um, working on them, uh, hopefully uh, in a couple of hours, um, one afternoon or on a Saturday morning, for instance. Um, this uh, scrapbook is going to count as a major grade uh, major quiz grade in each of your classes. Yeah, a major quiz grade in each of your each of your uh, classes. Um, what that means is if we have got um, uh, in, in science class a major quiz grade that's worth a percentage, a hundred points. So your scrapbook is going to count uh, as a percentage. Uh, depending on what your score is. Uh, it's going to count as a major formative in your math class, in your English class, in your social studies class, in your global languages class. This grade is going to count in all of your classes. So it's important that you set your goals high. How many of you would like to get a 100% on this baby? Everybody's hands should be going up. It is possible for every person to get an A plus 100 on this project. Um, and, and I'll explain exactly how you're going to do that. Uh, there is a work day in school. Uh, that is going to be the first uh, Tuesday, right before Thanksgiving, next, next Tuesday. And the first four periods, you, you will be working on your scrapbook. It is, I know you're looking at me like I'm crazy, but it really is kind of a fun day. Uh, music is playing. Uh, we, you're all spread out. You're uh, chit-chatting with your friends and talking, and you're getting all this work done. It is a really, really cool atmosphere. Uh, you'll go off to lunch. After lunch, you'll come back. You'll work a little bit longer on your scrapbook. Then we'll clean up and we'll transition to a movie. Um, but it's a really great day to get a lot of your work done. Kids get a lot of their scrapbook done on that Tuesday. Yes? Yeah, we'll, we'll tell you where you're going to go. Yes. Um, is it possible to get your whole scrapbook done? I will tell you, uh, you can get, uh, depending if you come prepared, and you've got your materials, you can get it almost done in one day. Absolutely. Yes? Um, so what would we be doing on the cutting that day or just the cutting that day? Mostly cutting and pasting that day. So you're going to need to come with everything ready to go, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay? Yeah? Well, uh, what would be mixed with the 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 You need to do them in advance. Uh, okay. You need to do them in advance of that. 
Um, we're trying to work out so that everybody's going to have a period of time in front of a computer, but you're not going to have that whole time in front of a computer. So it would be a better use of your time if you do all of that work at home and bring everything ready to go so that you're cutting things out, pacing, and, and uh, getting your scrapbook working. Okay? Um, of course, your scrapbook is going to include uh, your many photos, all of your individual DC projects at each of your classes, your DC passport, your wall rubbing from the Vietnam Memorial, and of course your famous quote. Um, just a, a little overview here. Um, first of all, your scrapbook can be an actual scrapbook. Some of you have gone out and purchased scrapbooks. That's cool. Um, that can be uh, your scrapbook. A photo album works nicely. It does not have to necessarily be a scrapbook. Uh, I've had many great scrapbooks made out of a three-ring binder with construction paper. Um, and even a bound construction paper with yarn or um, you can somehow work out digital. Somebody said they, they're going to try to do theirs digitally. I'm not sure how all of those pieces and parts would fit together. Um, I have this little item here. Uh, because it was a few years ago. It was really cool. I had a young lady uh, cut out construction paper. Uh, in the, it was about this big, and it was in the shape of the letter DT. And she cut out 25 pages of that paper and then poked holes in them and uh, tied it with yarn. So it was really unique. It was clever and unique. Um, but she did that all by herself. Uh, again, it was big, and she cut, out, cut it out so that it was in the shape of DC, and then that was her scrapbook. Um, so just keep that in mind. You don't have to go run out and spend $100 on scrapbooking supplies at all. Uh, we can do this cheaply. Um, and I need to know. If you are having trouble and you know, oh my gosh, there's no way I'm going to have anything, I don't know what I'm going to use, you need to talk to me about that. Send me an email, stay after class, anything you need to let me know by Friday. I will make sure that you've got something to work with on Tuesday. You cannot come to me on Tuesday morning and say, oh, Mrs. Franklin, I don't have anything, I need a scrapbook. I'm not, I, I can't help you on Tuesday. I will be happy to help you, um, but I need that weekend to get the supplies. Um, so let me know before Friday if you are one of those people that you're going to need some help. If you have missing photos, that's no problem at all. Uh, photos posted in Mr. Franklin's handout uh, folder. How many of you have been to Mr. Franklin's handout folder? He's got a folder for each bus, and then he's also got just generic pictures up there from Washington, D.C. from the trip this year and also from trips from previous years. So there's lots and lots of great pictures there. Also, don't be afraid to use the Internet. If you need a picture of uh, the White House, I'm pretty sure you can find a picture of the White House on the Internet. So you don't need to worry about uh, if you had problems with your camera, if uh, you happen to walk into a fountain in uh, World War II and lose your whole camera. You don't have to worry about that kind of stuff because there are pictures available to you that you can use. That pink scrapbook rubric that I just handed <coughs> you is uh, absolutely going to be your ticket to success. I promise you. Uh, this thing is going to guarantee your 100%. Your rubric is set up go match your scrapbook, or I should say, you should construct your scrapbook to completely match your rubric, okay? Uh, the rubric uh, has the order of all of your materials in your scrapbook. Why do you think that's important, that the rubric order matches your scrapbook order? Why would that be important, April? So that it's easier for us to grade. That's exactly right. So that I've got your scrapbook here. I Oh, there's that check. Turn the page. There's that check. Turn the page. Turn that check. So that I can run right down that paper. If I have to flip back and forth in your 
scrapbook looking for things, the biggest chance, the, the chances are that I'm going to make a mistake. There's, there's no doubt about it. If I have to hunt for items in your scrapbook, I'm going to screw up. So you want to make your scrapbook easy to grade, and you do that by putting headings on the paper, which I'll talk about, and by putting everything in order. So that pink piece of paper, like I said, is going to be your ticket to success. So the point values and the guidelines are indicated throughout the entire rubric. So let's take a look at the rubric, and we're starting at the top of the rubric there. Uh, the first thing that you'll see when you open up your scrapbook is a table of contents. Ironically, it is going to be the last thing that you create. First thing that you see, it will be the last thing that you create. Because you don't know what page your hotspots are going to be on because you don't know how many pages the collage will take. You won't know what page number things are on until the scrapbook is created. Once the scrapbook is created, then you'll know, oh yeah, the science project is on page 8, and the social studies project is, is on page 9. You'll, you'll know that at that time, uh, but you don't know that going into it. After your table of contents, the next thing is your uh, CC passport uh, will be uh, the next thing. Oh, I guess I thought it was a circle.
you're going to give me some little factoid, two of them actually, about the White House. Yes? Talk about Mount Vernon. Very good. If the picture is of you and your, your, your group at Mount Vernon, then by all means you would identify that you're out, who the people are in the picture, that you're at Mount Vernon, and then you're going to give you two facts about Mount Vernon. Okay? Good question. So that's the who's who section. So four, four, four. So this whole thing is 12 points. The who's who section of your scrapbook. <laughs> the next thing that you're going to have is your, your collage. And I'm sorry, this picture is a little misleading. Your collage absolutely can be pictures of different things around Washington, D.C. Extra pictures that you have that were cool. But we also want pictures of you and your, your friends at the dance, on the bus, in Wendy's, uh, walking down the mall, uh, wherever. The fun, candid shots uh, that will help you remember the people you traveled with in Washington uh, when you were in eighth grade. So all the things that will help you personalize your scrapbook. Um, but it can also be some memorial pictures, but mix in some of those people pictures too. Um, that would be fun. If anybody caught you know, a picture of, you know, I don't know, Mr. A dancing at the dance, or uh, if somebody was being goofy in your room and you took a picture of them when they first woke up and they looked weird, uh, whatever. If somebody took a picture of Palin after she climbed out of the, the fountain at World War II, just some fun things like that. Those are the pictures that should be included in your photo collage. Um, the only requirement is it has to be at least eight pictures. One point per picture, so this is a total of eight points. <clears throat> now, if you've got 15 pictures in your collage, that's fine. If you have 20 pictures, I, that's no problem. If you take a bunch of pictures and you cut them down so it, and create a collage, uh, that's fine. It doesn't have to be uh, full pictures like this. You know, you can cut out just Abe's head, and you can cut out just the Washington Monument, like that, and, and create like a collage along that, those lines as well. Any questions about the collage? After the collage, this is like the meat of your scrapbook. If you open up your packet, the pink packet, on the second page of that pink packet, it says the, the memorials and other hot spots. There's a huge list there. You guys were to pick seven items from that list that you are going to highlight in your scrapbook. Um, like everything else, it's seven, uh, seven uh, pictures. Each picture is worth two points for the picture, and then two points for the caption. Two points for the picture. Two points for the picture, two points for the caption. So that's a uh, four point total for each item. So this whole section is worth 28 points. It really is a big, big uh, big part of your scrapbook. Huge chunk of it. Um, you were to highlight seven hot spots. I know some of you had three or four pictures of World War II. Maybe some during the day, some at night. Maybe you got a picture of one of the reliefs uh, at World War II. You can have like a whole little World War II page in your scrapbook where you have all of those pictures and captions about World War II. Other hot spots, maybe you've only got one picture of Martin Luther King and a caption. One picture of the Jefferson Memorial and a caption. So don't be limited. The minimum is, of course, one picture. But if you've got several pictures of a particular hot spot, 
feel free to include that in your scrapbook. Yes. Right, it's just, just the monuments and memorials for the hot spots. But you can include other group pictures, either in your collage or part of your who's who's picture. Okay? Good question, guys. Okay, so I already did this. This is worth, uh, so this is the actual scrapbook rubric and uh, the who's who's pictures, like I said, that's a 12 point, uh, four points for each item, two points for the picture, two points for the caption. Your photo collage, a total of eight points. And then last but not least, these memorials and hotspots, two points plus two points, four points per item times seven is 28 points total. Now in addition to that, um, at the bottom here, after you get all of your hot spots, you're going to have your Vietnam wall rubbing. How many of you still have your biographical information about your person? Okay. It's not required, but I think it would be really cool if you included that biographical information along with your wall rubbing. And then after that, you're going to have your famous quote your quote that you found that, that meant something to you. Uh, you really don't have to do anything with that other than to have that quote in your scrapbook. Okay? Any questions about this? This is a big chunk of your scrapbook. All right, let's go on to the next page here. Okay, this is uh, the part of the scrapbook where you're going to get all the pieces and parts from the uh, other, your other classes, that's going to be uh, social studies first with the close-up project. I understand um, that the way that's going to work is you guys are going to print out your uh, introductory slides and the two slides you were, were, were responsible for making. Does that make sense to you? Like your cover slide, I guess, is that what it's called? Your introductory slide? And then the two slides that you make. So that's going to get printed out. Then you are going to do your uh, museum box uh, artifacts collage. Those two items will be uh, your social studies project. Then you will, of course, include all of the other things, your language arts, expository essay, your math bird's eye view, your science uh, scavenger hunt collage, your global language postcard, and then even though you are not in uh, PE or wellness right now, everybody is going to calculate the number of calories burned uh, while they are in D.C., okay? Uh, one second. If you have Mrs. Jacobson right now, um, by the end of the week, I will get you that information, a number of steps, so the website you're supposed to go to so that you can calculate the calories burned while we are in D.C. Yes. Yeah. Oh, the Mount Vernon extra credit. Um, I think you can absolutely include that with your social studies stuff if you want, but I haven't, uh, I don't, it's not required. But we're not going to penalize you if you include that in your scrap. Okay? Yeah. For the close up project? Oh, the, the table of contents? You can. It's up to you. I know there are quite a few kids um, that, you know, have a picture of their group on the front, or uh, it's up to you whatever goes on the front. Okay? Yeah. No, it could be a hot spot. Like, if you've got a ton of pictures of World War II, that could be one of your hot spots. Like, if you have a page and it's not, it's just, it's just like a day after, you can put it like... Yeah, you can put it after, at the end. Sure. 
if you've got extra pictures and stuff and it's not part of your collage, uh, and it's not part of your hot spots, absolutely at the end of your scrapbook you can add. Yes? Can I love to include a picture more than one? Absolutely. If, if there's a picture that's helping you with more than one requirement, absolutely you can duplicate it. Any other good questions? You guys are doing a great job with your questions. I hope they'll, they'll be able to hear it on the recording. Okay, and so on to the last page. This is the nitty gritty. Neatness. You guys are in charge of how neat or unneat your scrapbook can be. Uh, please, your captions should be typed up. Don't use Elmer's glue. Oh my gosh. And what does Elmer's glue do to your paper? It makes it bleed through and it makes it bump, bumpy and puckered up and everything like that. Get some glue sticks. Use glue sticks. Um, use scissors. Use rulers. Uh, type up your heading. Type up your caption. Do all of those things to make your scrapbook neat. Also, grammar and spelling. Oh my goodness sakes alive. There's nothing worse than a scrapbook that's got Smithsonian plastered across the top of the page spelled incorrectly, all right, or museum spelled incorrectly. Uh, please, use Microsoft Word. It's got spell check. Help yourself out, because sometimes it's hard to spot those spelling errors. Make sure you don't have any spelling and grammar errors. And then four points for just putting everything in the right spot. I know you guys can do that by following that pink piece of paper, that pink rubric. You get two points for including your grading rubric in your scrapbook. When you turn it in, you're going to get two points. If that pink uh, rubric is not in your scrapbook, you're starting off with a 98%. So all of those points add up to 100. But wait, there's more. If you look here, you get a workday grade bonus up to five points. I told you on Tuesday is our scrapbook workday. Your teachers that are supervising will be evaluating you based upon a couple of things. Did you bring your material to class? Did you come prepared? So that means you've got your, your pictures, you've got your scrapbook, you've got your glue sticks, your scissors. You're ready to go, number one. Number two, do you have a plan in place? Are you familiar enough with this project and what you need to get done that you know what you're doing? Number three, did you accomplish something during that time? Did you actually accomplish a reasonable amount of work? Number four, were you well behaved? Or were you being a ding-dong and distracting other people, bringing other people out? down and not, not doing the work that you could do. Uh, and then lastly, did you watch the movie? Were you a good audience member? Were you engaged in what was happening? Uh, it's easy to get all five points, uh, and I'm sure many of you will. So if you think about this, how many of you would like to get 105 points? Oh, that doesn't work when you try to write 105. 100 How many of you would like to get 105 points on the scrapbook? Put your hands up high and proud because everybody should want that. And it's very attainable, very attainable for all of you. Any questions about the scrapbook? Anything? All right, if there are no questions, I would put both of those pink uh, papers in your Washington folder. And now let's talk about your notebook check. There will be a graded notebook check on Monday. A graded notebook check on Monday. Let me describe to you how that will work. Uh, I am going to give you, it's almost like a worksheet quiz kind of thing, and I'll say, look at item number, in previous topic number two, uh, the 
Item number 22, the metric system and measurement quiz. What is the uh, last, uh, what is uh, the last word and the last sentence of that question? You would have to write it down. So you would open up your notebook, go to previous topic number two, go to item number 22, and you would look at the last question three, the last word or the last sentence, and then write it down. If you have it, uh, it will be a sense. It will be super easy to do. If you don't have that notebook in order, if you don't have all of those papers, then you will have a difficult time completing that notebook check at the time that we're going to give you to do it on Monday. Um, that green piece of paper has everything that you should have and keep in your notebook. If it's not on there, then you can take it out of your notebook and you can recycle it. Uh, turn your paper over and let's look at the important paper. On the back there, those important papers, the safety stuff, safety in a science classroom notes, your student safety contract, your scientific lab equipment PowerPoint packet, your poten potentially popcorn lab. All of those things are going to come out of the current section of your science notebook. And so you're going to move it back to the important paper. Once you've cleaned out your notebook and you've got all of the papers, you can number them in the bottom right hand corner of the paper. Major thoughts will be today from 2.30 to 3.30 and 103. The two topics I'll be today. Okay, the um, graded notebook check is on Monday. Um, so you need to have your notebook in order by then. Um, I have two different documents. I have items G and F under OAA section, and I also have number 26 under the previous topic. That was the test that you just took um, yesterday. Uh, so of course we'll get those and then you can add them to your um, notebook. Um, if you need any help, I am happy to help you with your notebook either before school or after school. And Mrs. Krogan's happy to help you with your notebook uh, during lunchtime. Uh, there are some papers. If you're missing papers, we do have some for sale uh, while supplies last. So of course, those papers will cost two terra tokens each. Um, but really, everybody should be able to get a nice, neat notebook. Um, and that's something we're going to be working on all year long.